Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and we're going to play with compressors for a while here. I'm going to give you a compressor from a while back, but a debugged version, and it's called Purist Squish. Purist Squish is my attempt at making a plugin that lives up to the sort of purist line of plugins that I've done, but in a kind of a different way because a lot of the purist plugins did what they do by having absolutely minimal processing. Well, what Pure Squish does is it does uh, some of its compressing by interleaving samples, and some of its compressing by interleaving samples in a sequence of three, and then blending between those two things so that the individual artifacts from any given compressor are minimized and, well, enough about that. Why don't I just show you? Here is a piece of music with a lot of thumpy bass and synthesizers and such. And I can turn on Pure Squish. And you can hear that it's a very similar tonality, except for that we're doing compressing rather than just leaving stuff alone here. And we can exaggerate it. And this gives us a much more aggressively uh, compressed sound. But rather than just only do this, I'm thinking that something that might be good would be to compare it to some other plugins that I've also got. So I'm going to compare it to Pressure 4, and I'm going to compare it to Logical, because those are also plugins that you can just have. I've released them already, so they're already out there. And you'll see what they sound like when we turn them all on. Okay, maybe not. Let's, let's not turn them all on. Let's do them one at a time. So we can hear our thumping going on, and that is the kick drum. And this particular recording is decent for demonstrating compressors because it does have that strong kick drum that'll cause the compressor to duck out of the way. It's not a very, it's not a distorted or um, limited track here. So you can hear what the compressor is going to do. And we'll show you logical four. And this guy is interesting because it's designed to be kind of like similar controls to a, uh, a typical SSL bus compressor, but it's really kind of its own thing. And we're pushing it pretty hard here. This, this minus 14 and the ratio of only four. Like I can use a a stiffer ratio, but that'll bring things in more. So we can just sort of mess around with it. Like one way to get it back to normal is to use ratio of one. This is kind of for people who are familiar with using things like this. Like I can whack the threshold all the way down. And then if we do it this way, what you get is a ratio that will cut the level down quite significantly. These are the normal controls that you get on a compressor, is things like ratio, makeup, gain, threshold, and so on. This is compressing things down to the 20 dB level. And you can also use a much smaller ratio for things like uh, two bus. You don't necessarily want to use high ratios, that's kind of like limiting. And since it's uh, logical, it's not necessarily a limiter. The reaction speed can be rather slow or kind of fast and grindy. And these are the kinds of things that you hear when you're dealing with artifacts out of a compressor. Is the compressor desperately trying to get back up to the full volume again? 
and if it's too fast, it gets kind of gnarly. So you hear a lot of grinding in there. And then if the ratio is not as high as that, ratio acts a little bit like a dry wet. In fact, that's often the way I implement it. And then if we're tired of playing with Logical 4 and it's more traditional um, compressor layout and it also has tone shaping stuff that's designed to be a little bit more like an SSL bus comp, we can go to Pressure 4. And Pressure 4 also has its kind of thing going on. But again, This one, speed, speed in this guy is reversed. Higher speed is faster response. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, I hear it kind of grinding away. Oh yeah. It's a little slower to react, this one. And then a slower speed makes it be a little cleaner. But this is the one that acts more like a Fairchild. It's got this really squishy quality to it. And this mewiness control is the uh, the very mew style quality. So I can put it to no mewiness and it will still have a compression behavior. Or I can put it to inverse mewiness which is like a New York style compression and smushes uh, quieter stuff but leaves peaks alone. And again, this one, you're getting some grindy qualities when you uh, aggressively squish it too hard. like that, you can really hear where it's just smushing things flat. It's happier being run on a, a lower pressure, but you can do things like to drums this way, where you just squash them to death. But, what you get with purest squish is those interleaved compressors and uh, pressure does have that as well, but well, I'll show you. It handles stuff a little bit more gracefully when you're pushing it that hard. So we have this smushed quality, and we've got. Uh, I try to improve these things as I go. So this one has an output and a dry wet thing going on. Nice way to do a, uh, a parallel compression effect in there. We can squish it good and hard, and it still kind of behaves itself a little bit. Do the parallel compress in there. And then if you pull it back, It's got a kind of nice, clean quality going on. But there's that one control that neither of the other ones had, Bass Bloom. Check this out. you set this up, you start getting the low frequencies through. All the way to pretty much full range. You can set it up to only squish the highs. Might need to trim it down a little bit to do that, but it'll do it. So basically the idea with this 
And here's how much it's doing. I check this out. Everything else was the bass bloom coming through. Everything else was the uh, acts kind of like a side chain. It acts like a high passing a side chain input. So you can set it up in such a way where you've got just only this click. Maybe you let a little bit of the dry through or simply use the bass bloom. You'll notice that it's got a very gradual onset where you're only getting the low frequencies to start happening beyond one half. And that's so that you can let subsonics through and have some of the scale of the mix survive heavy compression. And of course, the way we've got it set up, if you take the squish all the way out, that just becomes flat again. That becomes the same thing, only attenuated. Actually, no, it engages with the squish on, so let's keep playing with it then. So with uh, no bass plume, we've got this kind of grindy quality, then you bring it in, and we've got a bit of a foundation under everything. I'm over compressing drastically so you can hear how that works. And then we can clean everything up a lot by just pushing the bass boom up right into the lower mids, like this. And we're compressing that reverb so hard that we can probably do without some of that, so... Pull it right back. That was actually the end of the track and start bringing it up a little bit again. It doesn't necessarily take all that much to do something here. Like, especially if I take the bass bloom out completely. It begins to completely flatten out here. And we got that electric piano going on. Push it right up here, and then give it a little bit of bass bloom, just to define the lows a little. And there we've got something that you can't really replicate with the other ones very well. Like I will engage a bit of a loop. We can hear that there's actually a bit of a sidechain going on on that reverb, so we're not going to be able to make that go away entirely. But you compare it to, say, here, let's, let's... Let's retain some of that stuff. So with our pure squish, We've got this fluid kind of quality going on, whereas we'll slow that down, we'll keep it at full muteness and maybe pat it a little bit. And then lastly, logical. Logical has this more kind of clear, direct, obvious quality. It makes it sound like there's a compressor on there because it's designed to sound like a piece of hardware. Whereas pressure has this sort of colorful squishiness going on. And 
then pure squish. The idea... The idea is that this one is for giving the clearest possible effect while still letting you have the sort of dynamic swing induced by having a compression in there. And again, there's your per squish going on. Pressure. It's a little punchier, a little more obvious. It's not hiding itself as much. And then logical. It's meant to sound like a hardware compressor and behave in that characteristic way where it has a sound to it. It's supposed to sound kind of like your hit record console compressor thing. And I tried to tone shape it until it did that. And it's got a nice sound to it. I mean, that does work. But then... Pure Squish has this particular way of shaping the dynamics. And I think it just flows in a more interesting way. Like... So between these three, what we've got is logical, acting as much as it can like a hardware compressor, and sounding like a box that you run things through. Whereas pressure, more sort of character and a kind of punchiness, a kind of tonality being added to it, and pure squish is designed to sound as much as possible like nothing. I'm going to be drawing this to the attention of a classical music guy that I've been emailing with. Um, I've set him up with, I believe it was Surge Tide, which is the the most pure possible, well, rather than tell you, why don't I just fire it up? Let's make logical go away, because that's a whole separate kind of thing from the purest anything. And we're not going to talk about this today. Um, Search Tide, I believe, is the one. And this is tricky to set up, mind you, but... The idea is you can sort of maximize this one. It relates to the kind of speed that it has. I think on its video I had some kind of setup technology going on where it was a little more clear as to how to use it. But you can... Set the surge rate. And this is probably the comparison with uh, Pure Squish is the closest for this guy. Surge is a slightly more accessible version. What Surge Tide is doing is it's managing the rate of change of the rate of change of the rate of change. It's basically tracking what a normal compressor would do and slowly managing a kind of automatic gain control. And it's able to do it fast enough that it acts almost like a compressor, but not quite. The upshot of which is that the small variations that normally trigger a compressor to go on and off are completely, search tight is completely oblivious to that stuff. All it can do is kind of swing the volume up and down and it can't respond to anything more subtle. So what you get is 
a very slow automatic gain control effect going on. And without it, like it'll slowly kick in. We can slow it down even further with the surge rate. And it just steps on everything real hard. You can see in the metering, I move the metering over to make sure you can see it, that it's a relatively large track, but Surge Tide doesn't really key into the keyboard punches, but the overall thing is swinging around based on how much density is going on. And I've got it, vo I've got a dynamic inverting here. Like surge node is set so high, it's not really supposed to be set that high, that it's stepping on the gain super hard. Whereas something like this, or lower, will be a lot more transparent. And by transparent, I mean you really wouldn't ever hear it doing anything. And I think this is one of the reasons why this is kind of a sleeper plugin. People don't really get how to use it. They don't understand what the controls mean. And when they try to use it, they can't hear what it's doing because that's what it's for. But you combine that with, say, Purist Squish. Which is bringing up lows and letting a little bass through. We'll dial it back so we don't hear this. Let that bass through. And surge tide to follow it up. And what we get out of these combinations, and this is this is the combination I'm going to bring to the attention of the classical mastering guy. Because this is probably what you would use if you were trying to have um, very little noticeable gain reduction, a lot of purity in it. You can hear, for instance, if you're trying to do it all with the fast compressor, and it's grinding. Pull it back until it's not, and then kick in Surge Tide. Remember when you use compressors, that compressors multiply with each other. So if you have a ratio of 4 and a ratio of 4 in two different compressors, the resultant ratio that you're going to get is like 16 to 1. And that's handy when it comes to working with stuff like this, because if you're doing multiple degrees of uh, compression, what you get is one, then another. And you can dial them back quite a lot. And see, when we're doing this, we've got it, it has stepped on the uh, dynamics hugely. It's taken it down 12 dB, just about. You turn it back on, I mean, you turn it back off, and everything is getting up to quite loud. Surge Tide alone isn't doing that much. And Pure Squish alone isn't doing all that much, especially if I let the bass bloom through here. Although I am padding using it, so I could always bring it back up again. But then both of them combined. You've got a dynamic regulation that's going on that is fairly sophisticated. In fact, I can plainly hear the exaggerated compression, so what I should do is back it off even more than this. We'll back off Pure Squish. 
back off surge type, maybe speed it up a little bit. And we're backing these off like crazy, but it's still hovering around 12 dB down. It'll let some peaks through because this is not designed to kill all peaks. But it's going to do a very good job of just general dynamics shaping. And it's a good way of combining these two guys. Like we'll pull back some of the base too by pulling back the base bloom, but leaving it engaged. Surge Tide itself is going to respond to the extreme base in an interesting way. It, it will engage with it, but it's it responds so slowly that it doesn't mess with it very much. And one further demonstration. I could turn on a sine wave. I think this artifact is coming from Purisquish's triple um, behavior, and it depends upon whether you know what we've done to set it up, like the way that the sign is being done is it's interacting with the interleaving of Purisquish. Whereas if we just have search tide, actually, no, it's doing things with search tide as well. But here we have a double plug-in on a 20 hertz tone. And I think we do have um, yeah, see, that is coming from Purist Squish because it is the uh, the three-way interleaved compressor, and um, it interacts more cleanly with. See, if you just turn it on, that's not showing up at all. But when I change levels, it tends to hang on to artifacts, or if I distort. It starts hanging on to that unless I turn it off and then back on again. Let's find out whether it's the, the base bloom in there that's doing it. Nope. And by contrast, I'll show you what it's like if it was pressure for doing it. Pressure 4 has its own interesting qualities. And then if you speed it up, you get other tonalities happening. As we get into a more distorty zone with it, Also bear in mind that these, this goes down to 170 dB, so I'm showing you literally everything out of the noise floor. This, this is like what you get out of that um, plug-in torture test thread that exists in uh, a forum. So this is what we get out of surge tide engaged on the 20 hertz sign. And then if we turn pure squish on without throwing garbage at it from messing with the level. I'm not really quite sure what dim is supposed to mean. Uh, we have a pretty clean behavior, all things considered. Oh, just for fun, let's do something else. Let's do something obnoxious. Let me turn this way down because it's going to be annoying to hear. And we're going to play with sign sweeps. I 
Let's see now. Roll it. So firstly, here is pressure for And you can plainly see that it's generating some harmonics. By contrast, pure squish gets a little weirder. We do have it on, right? Yes? Yes, yes we do. See, here I think is the uh, side effects of the way that it's done. Like, Pressure 4, because it's not using the same kind of organizational behavior, is generating some harmonics, and that's part of why it has a tone color to it. If I went to, let's go and drag in uh, Logical again. Logical is kind of going to be my bad example, I think because it ought to generate... Oh yeah, yeah, see, there we go. Logical, because it's trying to model analog gear and it has that analog modeling saturation and stuff going on, you can plainly see that. You can plainly see the harmonics that it generates compared to not having one. This is not... And this is what logical gives you. It's pretty good about not bouncing, aliasing down, but it's still throwing a lot of harmonics because that's what it's designed to do. People tend to like harmonics. And we got pressure. And pressure is also generating harmonics. We can have a look at surge tide. Surge tide acts a lot differently. It's kind of like it's making a series of harmonics, but not really. And it's leaving stuff good and quiet as it goes up to the very top range. And then lastly, pure squish. Let's turn you up even more. See, now we can see what that thing is doing up there when you're distorting it in. What's happening is we have these two, a combination of two and three um, interleaved compressors. And if we, we screw it up by throwing in garbage data or cranking it out and distorting it, the interleaved uh, things wind up getting set off with each other. And we'll see these funny results. It's also, if, if it was doing this to you, you would hear the output level being smushed down. Whereas if you reboot the thing, it's completely clean again. And then if we do the bass boom, or indeed dry wet, both of those are ways of just passing the output through directly to the... So again, a bunch of weird behaviors out of these plugins. Again, this, this is a free plugin that you can download. This is based on the original purest squish, but the original purest squish had a issue where it was, um, here, let me turn this down further. Or let me play with it a little bit more. Let's see what it does when you go really loud into these compressors. I do have a pattern on the output good and hard, so.
Again, going straight into Surge Tide is really well behaved. Going straight into Pressure 4 gives you Mucho's uh, harmonics and a certain amount of aliasing. Pure Squish has that whole weird behavior. And Logical has just lots of harmonics being thrown in. You can hear it kind of zinging in there. It's very interesting uh, watching this happen. You need to use your ears on actual program content and try that because, as I'll remind you, what it sounds like on the audio is kind of like this. So this is the one with those weird, freaky effects, but given actual audio, it's, act it's behaving differently. You can couple it with Surge Tide. And you compare that to, say, Pressure. There's noticeably more artifacts going on, and Logical The way the dynamics are shifting is sort of more artificial that way. So it's almost like, you know, if you look at the metering versus if you use your ears, it'll tell you different things. If you use the metering, you've got logical having its distinctive quality to it. Pressure being a little bit more grungy. You can hear a kind of grindiness going on. Search tide, of course, being very, very clean, because it was that way regardless. And pure squish. handling the dynamics in a different way. And we're not seeing any crazy artifacts out of this. It's looking very similar, even if we're exaggerating it wildly. When we're handing it this kind of content, we're not seeing any funny spikes anywhere. It's just an artifact of the way that the interleaving works. So you compare that with, say, pressure exaggerated. And it's different. It's behaving very differently. And there's your pressure. to that, which is a little more grindy. And pressure also has a simpler form. Uh, here, let me show you something. Pressure still has an interleaved compression, but it's two tracks, two samples interleaved rather than a combination of a two and a three. So what that does is this. You can see a spike happening on the end while you're smushing everything completely flat. Whereas, if 
Because Pura Squish is doing this tricky interleaving thing. And I'll point out it's the same thing that caused the weird behavior with the sine waves. You saw how the funny spike on the end of uh, pressure was doing, but Pura Squish is not producing that. Pura Squish is producing a natural roll-off without any seeming artifacts on the end of that. It's the same shape. It's the same shape as you started out with. So you can you can discover very strange and interesting things with uh, test tones and stuff, and I hardly encourage that. But I would also point out that you know pressure behaves more predictably given the test tones. But Pure Squish is the one that retains the exact behavior of the audio when you're putting music through it on the meter. Anyway, enough about all of that. I'm going on forever because this is an interesting plugin and I'm getting to show, I guess it's a total of four different Dynamics plugins now, all of which you can have right now. And Pure Squish is simply the reissue of a older one that didn't come out yet and that I had to do a little bit of work on, the, the stuff that you were seeing with the frequencies um, is not anything that I can change. But what I did have to change was it was doing internal calculations in which it had to update some numbers and things. And it should have been doing that every sample, but it was doing that every buffer. Now, that wasn't directly associated with the waveform. It was more like speeds and releases and things. But all the same, it does mean that uh, Pure Squish, the current version, is debugged and has less artifacts in terms of that than the previous version, which went over pretty well, all things considered, back in the day. So, And it's also VST, and it's open source, and it has the floating point dithering that I'm gradually getting applied to all of the plugins. And yeah, sounds like that. Cut your bass through. And just for fun. Because I'm bringing Surge Tide to your attention. After all, you can have this too. the combination of these guys compared to remembering of course that compression is multiplicative and if you have a ratio of something on one and then a ratio of something on another you get those multiplied by each other so anytime you have more than one compression happening at the same time expect them to be more responsive to you like this And there you have it. It might measure weirdly with uh, sine waves and things, but this is a very aggressive, very clean compression. I've got it pretty much dynamics inverting right here. And the tonality is still about the same as it was before. In fact, we've got dry wet, so. Pure Squish is available now, and it'll cost you nothing if this kind of thing works for you. If you're okay with having plugins that are different from people's normal plugins, don't use the same algorithms, because I think it's fairly self-evident that um, 
this is not normal people algorithms, and what I'm doing with Pure Squish isn't being done by anybody else, because if it was, they would be measuring those test tones and things and throwing the whole thing away, and then you wouldn't be able to have it. I think that the sound quality that it produces on musical content is good enough that you should be able to have it, regardless of what it does on test tone sweeps that are really challenging form of measurement in the first place. And a lot of people's plugins will freak out and present it with that. This is all brought to you by Patreon. If you would buy one of these plugins for $50, please jump on my Patreon and put in like $50 a year. If there's a whole bunch of plugins that you would use, and of course, if you could afford to do so, then please jump on for a multiple of $50 per year. And uh, that keeps me doing this kind of stuff. Like if it, if it hadn't kept me doing it, um, first of all, I wouldn't have put out Surge Tide because that was during the Patreon period and uh, directly supported by the fact that people were involved with that. And I wouldn't be able to keep on revisiting things like Pure Squish, and I wouldn't be able to keep on putting out plugins that are different from other people's plugins. I think that that still has some value, and I really am appreciative of the fact that people are letting me do it. Now, there's a lot of stuff that I would do, like here, I've been, I've been making all these notes on like ways of working with Eurorack things and making stuff using uh, perf board and point-to-point -point wiring and that is also destined for coming up with a way of bringing it to people so that you can have it. I will also be working out a way to add some goals to the Patreon, because the thing about the where, where I'm at with it right now, I think it has been affected by the fact that I've blown through all of the goals and I'm giving you all of the things now. Like, there's, there's goals of, I promise that I will open source this and that, guess what, they already are. You know, I'll release these plugins, guess what, I already have. So many of the ones that I said I was going to do, I have done. There's more than 150 plugins, which is why the update for the floating point dither is taking so long. So I got to come up with new things if I expect to put higher goals, because I can't very well make a Patreon goal and go, oh, if I reach $1,500 a month, you know, like perilously close to minimum wage, ooh, then I will open source this if I've already open sourced all of the things. So probably what it's going to be is uh, more live streams, more interaction. Like you get more Chris time doing things that I don't always do. And one thing that has come to mind is I recently got cited in the New York Times by a fellow who did an article, which is actually based on my work, about... Um, evergreen albums, like what has happened with the loudness war and why some of the classic albums sound good to people and the way that they're arranged and structured. And I have got measurements of all that kind of stuff, including some very obscure measurements that I have to run on an old PPC um, machine because the, com the computer that the stuff was compiled on, it's an old version of Real Basic. And, uh, you know, which basically I have to run that on an even more antique computer than I do my plugin builds on. But it lets me do things like chart out the dynamics, the peak energy of um, classic hits, uh, albums, and things like the slew rate charted out over a range. And space between zero crossings, which nobody makes a meter to do that I'm aware of. And I don't have a meter like that right now, and I don't have an ability to do it, um, to make a VST or anything like that to chart this right now, because that's another thing that I would have to enlist people's help to do. But I do have the old real basic program from back in the day. It's strictly batch processing. I can't do it alive, but I could run this on newer stuff. And I have a collection of a hundred 
analyses of classic hit albums like the Eagles' Greatest Hits, a bunch of Led Zeppelin, Boston, all kinds of stuff like that, the Beatles. And I could spend a couple of hours a week showing you how this stuff was made and telling you everything that I know about those albums from many years of learning about all those kinds of things. And if that worked out so well that I did that for a hundred weeks and used up all of those albums that I was going to try to show people about, I could take requests and do the same kind of study on people's submissions if they were, say, Patreons above a certain level. Anyways, I'll be thinking about this kind of stuff and figuring out what I can do that is more, because my challenge with the Patreon is very much that I am giving everything that I possibly can in terms of my life work, the plugins, the audio processing stuff, for free to everyone as open source and not holding anything back. And that makes it challenging to run the Patreon because maximizing that is all about holding stuff back and not letting people have things. And that just doesn't sit well to me. So what I'm going to need to do is come up with something more to do that is my personal interaction and live streams and stuff. Now, I've gone on for an incredibly long time. This is an unusually long uh, plug-in video because I guess I'm just long-winded today. And I included many plugins in the comparison, and then I got sidetracked by the uh, frequency generator thing. But I'll be back again on Monday for my question and answer stream, and I'll be doing uh, music on Tuesday with my music stream. And uh, I put together the that red guitar there is um, bits of other guitars that I had, and I assembled them into a new form, kind of a Stevie Ray style uh, Strat style guitar. And I'll come up with things to play on that. And uh, yeah, until then, thank you very much, and I'll talk to you later.